Ian, how do you assess the state of uh, UK aviation uh, two years after we last met at Farnborough 2016? Well, I think it's a fantastic uh, opportunity. We, what we were talking about two years ago was opportunities, potential changes. What we're talking about at Farnborough this time round is real progress. You know, we, 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 we talked about being on the cusp of a technology revolution. We're seeing that technology revolution. It's fantastic. That, for me, is the big game changer from two years ago. And which is the most revolutionary aspect in this technological revolution that you're talking about? You know, I mean, there's some amazing technology changes, and whether it be materials, whether it be autonomy, whether it be electrification. But the real change for me is the way all of these come together and present new opportunities. There's new companies here uh, this time round. You know, there are the same old players doing really good stuff in aerospace, but things like unmanned traffic management, UTM, things like urban air mobility vehicles, things that you would not have seen two years ago, they're here. And what they are is the manifestation of all of these different technologies coming together, enabled by digital. So at the same time as this digital-led revolution in uh, air transport, um, in the ways that you, you mentioned, unfortunately there is an air of uh, uncertainty that's politically driven which is related to the ongoing Brexit process. How do you view the way ahead for UK aviation? Well, I mean, Brexit is a big uncertainty, and, and you know there have been a lot of uh, remarks, comments, political comments, industry uh, comments are, are, are around that. And there's no doubt, I mean, from a university perspective, Brexit is a introduces its own levels of uncertainty. The good thing about Farnborough is it's a global trade show. Cranfield is establishing itself. The brand that we are establishing is Cranfield's global research airport. The partnerships that we are establishing, whilst many of them are still with companies with European headquarters or with strong European relationships, these are companies that want to work with us because of the strengths and because of the excellence that we bring to it. So I can't comment on what is political uncertainty and that is causing major disruption across the business but what I can see is that if you do things right if you've got the right kind of offerings then people want to continue to work with us and that's the strength of uh, Cranfield. On Monday the Prime Minister when opening the show announced the aerospace sector deal um, which included a number of funding uh, grants to UK universities. Uh, can you give your perspective on the aerospace sector deal and how that feeds in to the work that Cranfield University is doing? Well, I think the Prime Minister, she actually trailblazed the aerospace sector deal. It was massively important to the sector that she, she did that. For the Prime Minister to actually give her endorsement to, to the sector, it's uplifting. It provides the platform upon which the officials inside government can interact with, uh, with industry and it provides the opportunities, future funding opportunities, future skills opportunities that, that, that make things together. So for me, her, uh, her talking about the aerospace sector deal gave a massive boost to those in the room who heard it directly and those that have read about it. Of the things that are covered in the aerospace sector deal. I mean, clearly from a, a university perspective, her commitment to research, her commitment to further investment in new technology and a recognition of some of those new opportunities. She mentioned electrification in her speech. I mean, that, that, that shows that the messages that industry are giving back to government in terms of where those opportunities are, are being heard and that government are saying back, we support you. And Cranfield University is already driving a lot of the uh, points that were mentioned in, in the aviation sector deal, with uh, DARTEC, for instance, being uh, a prime example. Can you update us on progress with the digital tower in DARTEC, which is one of the main projects? It, 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 the digital tower is a, it's, it's an incredible opportunity. We, we, we're working with Saab to establish what I believe will be the first operational digital tower here in, in the UK. The advantage from a Cranfield perspective is Cranfield is both an operational airfield and a research airfield. We will be using, by the end of this year, the digital tower facility in a real operational sense. Handling live traffic. 
handling live traffic, showcasing to other universities, other airports around the UK the art of the possible. And in addition to that, we'll be able to capture the kind of processes, the information, uh, in, in an appropriate way that allows us to do the research that actually takes the current generation of digital towers and actually develops into the next generation of capability. Are you expanding the industrial partnerships with DARTEC? Uh, a number of uh, OEMs and, and contractors are already involved in partnership with Cranfield in DARTEC, but uh, are you looking to uh, gain new members? Yeah, so we've got a really strong industrial partnership with DARTEC, Talis, Saab, uh, Avalent, Monarch Engineering, all key partners uh, in, in, in the project. We're always looking for, uh, for new partners. We see DARTEC as a key part of Cranfield's global research airport. And so, as well as looking for partners for DARTEC, we're looking at how we can get partners in a much broader context. We've got the AIRC, Rolls-Royce and uh, Airbus key partners. We've got the Integrated Vehicle Health Monitoring Centre with partners with, uh, with Boeing. We've got uh, DARTEC now. So we're looking for partners for DARTEC, open for business. But we're looking for partners that go beyond DARTEC. We're looking for industry to see Cranfield as that global research airport. And uh, one of the initiatives that uh, Cranfield has announced uh, during the show is a, an aviation white paper in which you uh, outline a number of uh, important uh, priorities for aviation digitalization in the coming years. Are you able to give me a couple of examples of the key points in the white paper? Yeah, well, the, the white paper builds on a strategy, and the strategy is around what we've referred to as the four A's, defining and delivering aircraft of the future, airport of the future, airspace management of the future, and airline of the future. And it's that ecosystem that joins them all together. It's digital that enables those to, to join up. Some of the key sort of things that we will be looking at are UTM, the ability you know, to fly urban air, urban air mobility vehicles in, in airspace or drones in airspace. Some of the things around e-taxi, ground autonomy, using the airport in a, a more uh, integrated kind of way. Looking at the passenger experience, you know, the, the, the way that we can uh, look at airports in the future in a more integrated transport way, perhaps pop-up airports, things like that, so we can take the pain out of the passenger experience of going through an airport. You know, so those are the kind of things we're looking at in DARTEC. Would certainly be a great help to every single air passenger in the world. Uh, one last question, Ian. Um, the, uh, the NARC uh, consortium of uh, UK universities uh, was announced again during the, the Farnborough Air Show this year. Uh, why, why now? Uh, why not before? And what are the main uh, achievements that you're trying to gain by setting up NARC? I mean, it's difficult to answer a question of why not before. I mean, I, uh, fundamentally, uh, the UK has great excellence across its university base. Um, from a, a, a country point of view, we took a decision a few decades ago to disband some of the national aerospace laboratories. And if you sat outside the UK, quite often you ask the question, so who do we talk to when we come to the UK? We know University X does this or University Y does that, but we can't talk to all the universities all you know, separately. What people are looking for and what business is saying is, can you find an effective way of bringing the aerospace universities together? Not, not to merge universities into single institutions or anything, but to have a common voice that we can talk to. Something that we can present a picture from a UK to the outside world that shows a coherent picture of how those centres of excellence are all contributing to the aerospace agenda. The Prime Minister referred to it in her sector deal, as we talked about uh, earlier. So for me, we maybe should have had this before. I think it's a gap that industry has been crying out for. And I think that's why uh, it's being so well received by business, government, trade associations and universities. But we're starting, we've got 10 key aerospace universities working together 
given a pledge to work together in a National Aerospace Research Consortium. We've had a couple of successes uh, already in terms of it's been that consortium that's jointly lent its support to the Amy Johnson Challenge. It's that consortium that has supported the notion of the uh, Women in Aviation um, Charter. So, you know, already industry has found an effective way to channel its communications with um, with the aerospace universities across the UK. It's a UK specific initiative, but uh, will NARC also be looking outward to European partners, yeah, particularly in the post-Brexit so environment? So, so the whole point of NARC is to bring UK universities together to speak with a coordinated and common voice. But one of the principal objectives of that is so that we can engage with universities and establishments from outside the UK. If NASA wants to talk to the UK research network, rather than saying, who do I talk to? We talk to the National Aerospace Research Consortium. It brings that common uh, picture together. If um, Singapore wants to talk to the research establishments across the UK, rather than having to go to Bristol, Cranfield, London, up uh, into Glasgow or Strathclyde, it can talk to the National Aerospace Research Consortium. So it'll have a very strong outward-facing element.